all right guys uh i just wanted to sh hey guys it's jay i'm back and i just want to do a quick tutorial on how to connect to a stock market based api and just pull some very basic data off of it to hopefully get started on whatever sort of whether you're making like a bot trading application or whatever it may be so let's go ahead and pull these api the uh, api key and we're going to copy that and inside our folder we'll make a config.py and we can store this basically as just our as a global variable and we'll just say api key is equal to the string of the api key so we'll go and paste the api key we got and we'll save that there now we're going to open up one more and let's just you know call this client dot pi and the first thing we want to do is we want to import a polygon sorry and we want to say from polygon import and we want to say the rest client here and that's going to be important because in order to connect to polygon we need to pass the api key and using the rest client we'll be able to say client is equal to rest client and here's where we pass it so the api key that we made back in config we can't just say config.api key uh there's no way it knows what config is right now so we also want to say import config and here we'll see config api key works out next thing we want to do is in order to get the actual aggregate bar data from polygon what we're going to set up uh, it's going to give it <laughs> we're going to import json sorry we're just going to do this because polygon gives us the data back in a json parsable file or returns it in that format so we're going to go ahead and say import json now we can go ahead and set up getting the aggregate stock data so what we can do is we can say um from typing import cast and we'll say our aggregate data is going to equal uh cast and what we're going to do is we're going to cast an http response so another thing we're going to want to import here is actually from your lib uh, three import http response so once we do that we can now say http response comma we can say client dot get ags this is a function included in the polygon library and inside of this we're going to need to pass a couple of things we need to pass a stock ticker so we can say apple we're going to say this is on uh, the one day format. Oh, day, and you can kind of read through each one of these. It kind of basically tells you what each variable is needed. You can also go on the Polygon docs. So if we go real quickly to the REST API docs and we just look up, I believe, under trades and we. Leave, I just type bar, aggregate bar is right. There it is. You'll see that this is what we need. These are all the parameters it needs. So, okay, we're also going to need the time span. So, basically, our start date and end date. And we can say 2022, let's say 0520. And let's say end date is 2022, 11. Uh, 11 sure so let's go say raw equals true at the end here and then the last thing is make sure to put a comma here for the cast and that should be all the data we're going uh we're going to send this we're going to ask request for the data from apple from this time frame and that'll be stored in ag so if real quickly we want to just print ags to see what this returns to us. We'll see. Response object. Okay. 
So let's pull the data out of here. So real quick, let's say data equals JSON dot loads ags dot data. And then let's print the data and then you will see what I was trying to show in the first place. There it is. So you can see that starting from our first time frame, we get a bunch of these symbols. So we have V, V, W, O, C, H, L, T, and N. And if you're familiar with this um, already, most other APIs will give it to you in the same format. For example, Alpaca API, very, very similar format. Now these all stand for like the volume, the close, the high, the low. And again, we can see this here. It, everything is listed in the documentation. So the docs are a really good resource to go to for most of these APIs, but I just wanted to get you guys started so you can actually pull this data. Uh, for example, let's say you just wanted the close prices and you didn't want to have to sort through all of this. Um, I guess a very basic way you can pull that off uh, is through some for loops. So let's say, let's grab all this raw data as it's under results. Each one because, okay. So if we go through and we say for item in data, let's print the item. So you'll notice when I say print item here, you get the ticker, the query count, the results, adjusted results, stats, request ID, and count. And you can also see this here. Uh, there it is, the ticker, boolean, query count, request ID, and again, it's all listed here. But what we want is the results. We want all of this, uh, where the volume, the close. So in order to get the results, we can say something along the lines of, like, let's say if item is equal to results, uh, we want to store this. So let's say raw data is equal to the data that we got there. So we're going through this, this data stores a ticker, a query count, results count, adjusted results, status, so on and so forth. And we're hunting for the results and we're grabbing, uh, we're setting raw data equal to this. So now that we have raw data, if we just print raw data, we should just see all of the strings here. No status, okay, no nothing. We just got the results. Now we can pin this down even further. So we can, for example, say for bar. So we can, each one of these is a bar. So we can say for each bar in the raw data, uh, we can say the, let's print what's in the bars actually. So if we print what's in the, the bars that we get here, you'll see we get each individual bar and we can say for, let's say category in each bar, let's print the categories. And you'll notice we're just slowly getting deeper and deeper into that. So now you'll see we have a call to each one of those. So in, for each category in the bar, we're now getting what we need. So we want just the C's, the close prices, for example. And again, this can be done with the H, the L, the high, low volume, whatever value you need, you can kind of get it from for loops like this. So we can say if that category is the close price, we can then say, um, let's quickly make like a close list array and let's go ahead and just append that value. And we want the value that's contained in there. So if we now print the close list that we got, we should have all the close prices for Apple from our range of dates. So this is a pretty quick uh, just thing I wanted to get out there just so not only I had something to reference back to, but hopefully it helps others just because uh, sometimes when you're just given like a lot of data uh, at once and sometimes you don't know how to sort, sort through it or, you know, pull just one specific thing out. I just wanted to show you just how you could quickly do it with Polygon. Uh, for Alpaca, it's a very, very similar thing. Um, for Yahoo, it would be 
a little better to use something like this than uh, Yahoo Data just because Yahoo Data is web scraping. Uh, it will go quite a bit slower, but it's still, still a great thing just to grab the stock date. So hopefully you found this helpful and uh, I'll catch you guys in the next tutorial.